Hello everyone. So I like to go clubbing from time to time, uh, usually electronic dance music. And uh, I saw those lighting shoes a while ago. I thought, hmm, those are pretty cool, obviously different brands. Uh, they're pretty cheap. You can get them for about 50 bucks, which is almost too cheap, actually. Um, that's why they go bad in multiple ways. Uh, as you can see, all the LEDs are the same color, except if actually they're starting going to go bad and then there'll be different colors, but not by design. Um, there's a little button on the side where you can change the pattern and the battery inside is really only good for about four hours so I've actually hacked mine I uh, put a much bigger lipo on them inside the shoe so I can get about 12 hours and that was my first little project uh, I'll give a link on that uh, since I already have a page but anyway if you like to tinker uh, usually uh, you go shop around and flea markets and things like that and I found this uh, LED strip uh, three colors are LEDs and you can see here um, RGB uh, with ground and you have this little controller here that which takes infrared and will output different colors but all the LEDs are the same because they're not addressable uh, that's why it's 10 bucks uh, for the whole strip which is incredibly cheap now okay I have this strip now what can I do with it and well <laughs> I can put them on my a nice silver shirt so I have this other demo here let me turn this one off on a different pack here and turn this one on this one a bit more fancy I'll start with the controller I made uh, so I'm using um, those uh, batteries 18650 same ones in, that are in my Tesla car um, and this is actually a lipo tester per cell so I've actually added per battery uh, wires to go to that tester so it will show me how each cell is doing and that way if I have one battery getting too low, I can start getting warnings, which are the beeps you heard. Those are usually supposed to be protected where if they get too low, uh, you can recharge them. I suppose they won't go flat and die. But it's iffy. Some of them do not recover very well. So it's better to not take them below 3 volts. And that, that will ensure that this doesn't happen. So from here, I have um, a few boards. I'll start with this one. This I got uh, from Amazon, also reasonably cheap, uh, one of the many drug power boards. Um, this one is actually used to change the voltage. And it will show me obviously how many amps are going out. Uh, the reason for that, and I'll show you the shirt here, is same thing. It's the same concept of LEDs in three colors. You can see the wires in between, RGB and ground. Um, if I were to limit the current to a given value as the color patterns change, then the current wouldn't match the color pattern. Like, let's say just blue would be getting way too many amps and then white would be getting not enough. So that's why you can see the amp number changing here. Um, the reason why I have this board is that the LEDs actually ended up being too bright and were blinding people in the clubs. And I like to be shiny and all, but I don't want to be obnoxious. So on the LEDs, you can control the intensity by changing the voltage. They're actually meant to be for 12 volts. But if I take the voltage down, you can see right now I'm using one amp or more, depending on what's being lit. Um, then they end up being too bright. Also, the batteries will not last as long. Those batteries are about three, uh, three amp hours, give or take. So that would only give me about four hours of runtime. Um, so I can take the voltage back down about 8 volts and now you can see I'm using like a third or a fifth of an amp so that will get me running uh, for more than about yeah, about 24 hours so this is how everything started now you can see obviously those LEDs are shining and changing patterns uh, that's using an LED controller which is hidden down there on the shirt let me make some room here so this little guy right there is the controller um, it takes input 12 volts, or 8 in this case, output RGB, and the, the connection between the LEDs tend to break and not be very reliable, so I have wires in a few places to uh, duplicate uh, the connection in case, uh, let's say, this one uh, breaks, uh, if one color is missing, it will be fed from the other side to give redundancy in basically what is a bus. 
Uh, it looks a bit ghetto, but it works. So all those LEDs, again, are supposed to be the same color. In real life, they're not exactly, and the reason is, uh, again, one of the uh, connections here and there, despite my redundant wiring, uh, some of the connections are actually broken. Uh, so it gives me a bit of uh, extra color patterns, but that's not by design. Uh, the board here uh, comes with a pretty fancy remote. I'll show you the remote right here. Plenty of colors. So if I want red, green, and blue, and you can pick all those other colors, and then some auto mode where I'll just flash different colors. Um, I can do fading, which is a bit actually more uh, smooth transitions, and then I can go quick and I can go on slow, it will slow them down. So actually if I go in auto mode and let's uh, see more quick you get some pretty crazy stuff like that. So that's nice, you know, it, it worked pretty well. Um, but again, all the LEDs are the same. You cannot have patterns going up and down them. Um, it's just the same thing on all the LEDs. Um, Modular the ones are a little bit broken. But that was the start.